Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Really exciting video. We're gonna go heads up between these two putters and is there actually a difference? I'm here with my friend Anthony. Hey Anthony, how's it going? You can find, follow Anthony on Instagram at Straight and Narrow Golf, which he just started, really a fun account. Okay, so recently Anthony, I've been wondering because I started off when I first got this putter, it's called the Even Roll Tour Stroke, a very radically different looking putter. You can see with the neck super set back and I was uh, putting good with it in their lab and stuff and I was using it for a while and then I got a little out of confidence with it and then I went back to the ER1. So you guys can see these heads are almost identically the same. So it was getting me wondering how can I test from, from a totally non-biased, just more of a scientific way, right. which is just the straight up better putter right. for me. So what Anthony and I are gonna do is Anthony just went out and he set a course, a nine hole course here the Long Beach Open is about to happen, so this is a very pure green right now. Using the distances for each of these putts we're going to take, um, put them in the strokes gain calculator. Um, so what is this one? This is 18 feet. We're both going to putt with this, and we're going to try to do uh, 36 holes. We're going to maybe do more. We're going to see like how long it's taking. Right. And uh, I'm going to use this one, you're going to use that one, then we're going to switch. Right. And we're going to calculate all these distances into a strokes gain calculator and uh, write it down and really try to figure out, okay, well, which one are we actually making more putts with? The first person will get the tour stroke. Perfect. You, okay. So Anthony's going to do the tour stroke, and as he's doing the tour stroke, I'm going to be doing the ER1 because I want to see if, uh, because a lot of the studies that I've seen, is that a lot of people buy putters, and you've probably seen this, right. based on how they look, right. you know? Look but yeah, yeah, the feel of it, the look of it, and uh, they've seen that the correlation to how it looks, because everybody's always thought like, oh, like a, some of these really nice, very expensive putters. So, but, like, people always say like, man, if a putter looks good in my hands, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna drain putts with it. But they've seen that uh, even though a putter may look great, it doesn't, add up statistically to making more putts no they've seen certain putters that are like just like people have been like super low on their look meter right uh and have made more putts for them and the putts the putters that were great on the looks meter have made less so it's important to try to separate yourself from right. what's actually happening all right anthony so what did you you won the tour stroke, I got the tour stroke. Yep. okay anthony so we're gonna go we're always we're gonna be using the same ball what what ball are you using Bridgestone uh, XS. Okay, and I have the, actually the, the exact same ball, the Tiger ball, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I found this, so maybe it was one of your lost balls that Probably. I found, yeah. Uh, does, it, does your ball say Tiger on it? No. Okay, my ball says Tiger on it. Here we go. Let's see what's better. Okay, so Anthony and I just did 36 holes. Anthony was using the Tour Stroke, the one with the setback neck. And then I was using the ER1, which is the same head without the neck. All right, now that was 36 holes. Now we're gonna flip and uh, flip putters and go through it. All right, this is really an exhaustive test. So far, we've played, what is that? God, a lot of holes. How many holes are we, are we gonna play total? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight rounds. What's eight rounds? 144 holes. Because it really doesn't count unless you get a lot. It's annoying, but man, it's a grind. Are you you're getting your? Can you get your focus back here? Yeah, I'm trying. Okay, yeah. what are you counting up? Making sure we're doing that. But yeah, with this putter, I I've averaged two under with this putter, and about even with the other putter. Okay, and I'm not sure what I'm at. I know that I'm a little better with the other one, but there's still two rounds of golf left. Okay, going into my final round, I got a, I'm, I'm wavering on my focus here. That was just all twos. This, I'm, using, I'm on this, so I did, we did four, I did four rounds with the ER1 and then four rounds with the tour stroke, four rounds again with the ER1, and now I'm on my fourth, my eighth final and final round with the tour stroke. I wanna make sure it matches, so I want my focus all the way up. Really try to break that record. Three under's been the best, so I'm really trying to break that. 
All right, Anthony, we did it. Yeah, we did it. Finished. <laughs> that was tough. That was a uh, total between the two of us. How many holes of golf did we play? 288. So he played 144 total holes. I played 144 total holes. So we played 72 holes with each putter. Right. And uh, so we have the results here. We didn't do the strokes gained yet, which I'll do later, but um, the results are pretty obvious for now. So let's just go through them first. So uh, Anthony with the, the tour stroke, so this is the, this is the one, um, it, was kinda, it was made as a training aid, but then uh, some guys on the Champions Tour and other tours have been using it as a regular putter. So for the tour stroke, over 72 holes, Anthony, what were you with the tour stroke? I was a uh, five under for the 72 holes. So that's combining everything. So, right. so that's a couple three putts and, and uh, some birdies. Yeah. For the entire 72 holes, I was also five under with the tour stroke. So uh, now let's go over to this one here. So put that one up. So this is the R1. So it's, the, it's really, it's almost exactly the same head, same grooves definitely. And uh, but the without that neck. All right. So for the ER one over uh, 72 holes, I was nine under par. So that's four strokes better with I, the ER one. What were you? And then I was 16 under, so 11 strokes better with the ER one over the tour stroke. Right. So for that, we can see that for me anyway, um, being over that many data points, I am a little bit better. I am quite a bit better. Uh, over the long run with this one, so without the, the uniquely back neck. There were some interesting takeaways, I think, right. from when we were playing, Anthony. What did you feel as far as like using both of them flip-flopping? So going back and forth, I feel like your hands get set forward more with the tour stroke yeah. than the ER1, um, which translates pretty well when you go back to the ER1. I feel like my stroke was a lot more complete. With the tour stroke, you can't quit on it or also just pull everything because the offset is, is pretty big. So when you use that, if you quit on it, everything just goes straight left. And then translating over, you feel like your stroke is much, much more complete, much fuller yeah. with the regular. Some, sometimes when you're using the ER1, I don't know if you agree with this, but sometimes when you're using the, the, a regular putter, you can kind of do like a well-timed quit yeah. stroke. You can get handsy with it. Yeah, and get handsy. You kind of stop and, and like do we, almost like a minor flip where you see like the, the club has, the head past your, and you can actually putt okay with that, but uh, especially under pressure, that can be right. like bad. For my final review, and we'll get your thoughts too, Anthony, is I think this is confirmed that for me, because this is kind of what I saw, I, this was in my bag for like two months. But then when I, when I eventually, I took it out of the bag because I was missing some three footers left because it was so punishing uh, as far as like, if you did get tired or quit on it, it would, it would just miss it left. But it did encourage a better stroke because then when I noticed when I did take this out of my bag and put the regular putter back in my bag, I was like extremely sharp. So for me, it's confirmed that this is a very good training aid and something I'm gonna continue to use, but it's not gonna be like an in the bag putter for me at all. Uh, what are your final thoughts, Anthony? Uh, pretty much the same. I feel like the shorter putts, I missed everything left. Like I had a lot of three putts with that putter just from not very good lag putts because I'd come up on the ball, hit it kind of thin, and then my distance control was off. But I did like the feel of the putter and it did really promote you getting your hands through the putt rather than stop and flip. Um, but I, I mean, it, it does look a little different as well. Mm -hmm. But as a training aid, I really liked it. Yeah, it was really good. The feel is really nice, um, and it really translates well. I feel to a standard putter. The order is very important. Um, I t I use the regular putter first, and then I use this. But then when I u when went back to the regular putter, I even though it was later in the day, a little bit more hungry, a little more tired, I shot lower. Anthony, you saw the other way though. Right. Yeah, I shot better right after I used that one, and then when I went back to that after using this and then my final round with the ER1 was a little yeah. was a little higher score but yeah. still pretty close. Yeah because Anthony started with this putter right. which he had never used before in his life and then he went to the traditional ER1 you know uh, regular looking putter and uh, you shot you shot really low right uh, right out of the gate yeah, with, yeah. With nine under nine for under. 72 holes. Yeah. Is that right? No, nine under 36. for for thirty six holes. So that was uh, really good. 
So uh, yeah, I think this is definitely uh, validated as a training aid, not validated so much for like if you're just going out and trying to, to shoot a score because right. it will punish you, yeah. you know, if, if you mess up with it. So um, yeah, it was really good. Thanks a lot, Anthony. Yeah, if you guys are interested in getting these putters, I think it's, I haven't talked to even roll people in a while, but I'm pretty sure it's still active to get free shipping on nice. any of their putters uh, using the promo code Be Better Golf. And if you, and also like people have been asking me like, cause I went down there for a fitting, which is an interesting process. Um, there's a special Be Better Golf person that works there. So just email me and I'll give you his email if you want to do a, um, a fitting down in Carlsbad, which is pretty fun. So the other thing, the next thing I want to test Anthony at some point one day is whether or not the grooves are doing anything. So if we could right. play, if we could play 288 yeah. holes of one club with grooves and one club with no grooves, that would be interesting. Do you think it would be enough just to put masking tape on? Probably not. Well, exactly. No. The you, would, would... you would need two identical putters. One just has no grooves. Right, correct. Yeah, right. So I'm going to try, I try to organize that because I know that Evenroll actually has a putter with, uh, that they made with no grooves to be able to prove that. But I'd like to see how it comes out in the data. Let me know in the comments, guys, any other uh, heads up tests you guys would like to see between equipment or uh, that we can incorporate with uh, training aids because I think there is a way to scientifically calculate the effectiveness of a training aid. I'm just trying to think of the uh, statistic like way to do right, that, right. you know, because it's a little different because it's not apples to apples. Right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Click the subscribe button. See you later. Bye. That was fun. Cool. Yeah, that was a lot of fun.